more with Robert Reich, propagandist for the economic socialists, and I would even argue American Marxists. Go. The concentration of the American economy into the hands of a very few corporate giants with the power to raise prices. If the market were actually competitive, corporations would keep their prices as low as possible. Stop. As corporations would keep their prices as low as possible. What an example, hamburgers. There's a shortage of meat, a shortage of meat. They complain about big oil, that's big meat and big meat packaging. Oh yes, we didn't have a problem with them 18 months ago, but now they're holding back meat. Why would they be holding back meat? I mean, really, they make more money by selling in quantity. Same with oil companies. Over the long haul, that's what they do. That's what they need to do. So here we have hamburger. The price of meat is going up. Have you been in a grocery store lately? Of course you have. You can see that the pickings are becoming fewer and fewer over time. They can barely keep the shelves supplied. Now those who raise the cattle for the meat are telling us there's going to be shortages. Why are there going to be shortages? Because there's shortages of fertilizer. What is one of the elements in fertilizer? Believe it or not, oil. And what do they need fertilizer for? To grow hay. There's not enough natural grass out there on a private farm to feed the cows. So often they, they provide them with hay. Other animals are provided with corn. The people who grow wheat, the people who grow corn, tell us that they can't afford or even get the fertilizer. And so there's going to be a 20%, listen to me, they've announced this, they announced it three weeks ago, a 20% smaller crop in corn and wheat. There's going to be a 20% reduction in the availability of wheat and corn when it's harvested at the end of the summer, early fall. We already know this. That's going to affect the price of everything, flour, bread, bakery products, everything, price of meat because of the offshoots, price of chicken, all of it. A lot of it's used as feed grain, and that price is going up. So when he gives us pictures of hamburgers that these companies are just raising prices to raise prices, they're desperately looking for supplies, which brings me to the supply chain. I'm almost 65 years old. It's kind of frightening, really, when you think about it. I don't ever remember a supply chain issue in my 64 former years. A supply chain issue because of the virus? Who are they kidding? Not a supply chain issue because of the virus. And they've had now how long to fix it? A year? But they can't fix it. Why? Because of the longshoremen. That's why there's six big ports in Long Beach. Only one of them can work 24-7. Why? Because of the union work rules. Because of the environmental rules where? In California. And Biden will not override them. Only certain truckers can truck in and out of these ports. Did you know this? Well, it's true. So Biden can't do anything because number one, he's caused these problems. His party has caused these problems. And number two, his base would never allow him to do what you need to do. Competition, the market system, go. Needed for customers. Even if some of their costs increased, they would do everything they could to avoid passing those costs on to consumers in the form of higher prices. Now, what if you're in business to make some money? If you can't make some money, you're out of business. That means no employees. That means no product, no service, and for your leftists, no taxes. That's what you're in business to do. It's not a philanthropy, it's not a charity, it's not a college and university, which really is quite funny because they don't work on a cost-benefit basis, do they? 
they're not competitive, are they? They drive up their tuition no matter what. Go. For fear of losing business to competitors. But that's the opposite of what we're seeing. Corporations are raising prices even as they rake in record profits. Did you know that the federal government has raked in more taxes than any time in American history? How come we never talk about the robber barons in the federal government? How come we never talk about all the money the federal government takes from you, which doesn't even come close to all the money the government spends, which doesn't even come close when you add those two together to all the money people have to expend to meet regulations coming out of the federal government? How come they're not robber barons who take all this money, who have the power to make laws which corporations cannot do on their own, redistribute wealth to their left-wing base, redistribute wealth to various economic categories that they create in order to buy votes to sustain the Democrat Party? How come we don't really explain the ruse that's taking place in this country? Go ahead. Corporate profit margins hit record highs last year. Okay. If that's your concern, and of course, that's not the case with small businesses. Small businesses do the vast majority of hiring in this country, the vast majority of spending in this country. You wouldn't believe it listening to clowns like this. They are the heart and soul of our economy, small businesses, and yet they're the ones who are punished. Who's in bed with these corporatists? The Democrats. And the corporatists are in bed with them. They oppose Trump, they supported Biden, their executives are all over TV, pushing the left-wing agenda. They're woke. They're pushing social engineering, inequity, LGBTQI+, or whatever else is there. They're the ones who are spearheading, in many respects, providing the resources for these various movements. Over here, Disney, Nike, Apple, now Walmart. I could go on and on and on and on, right? Go ahead. These corporations have so much market power, they can raise prices with impunity. So the underlying problem- So how come they didn't raise prices with impunity 18 months ago? That's their problem. They don't believe in facts. How come they didn't raise their prices with impunity 18 months ago? You know, in California, you've probably seen this by now, gas is going above $8 a gallon. One dollar and one cent of that gallon goes to the state government. Wow. And another percentage goes to the federal government. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And what do they produce? Carbon dioxide. Go. Isn't inflation per se, it's lack of competition. Corporations are using the- Lack of competition? We were energy independent 18 months ago. The price of a gallon of gasoline was $2 less a gallon than it is today. Has something happened with the oil company structure? No. No. We had an insurrection. That's right. Biden took the White House and the Democrats took Congress. That insurrection. Go. Use of inflation to raise prices and make fatter profits. Take the energy sector. Only a few entities have access to the land and pipelines that control the oil and gas powering most of the world. They took a hit during the pandemic, as most people stayed home. But they are more than making up for it now, limiting supply and ratcheting up prices. Uh, so the oil companies are limiting supply. And there, of course, we have two experts, Joy Reid and Elizabeth Warren. Between two of them, they would embarrass Mao Zedong and their IQ definitely in the negatives, even combined. So two radical left-wing hacks pointed to by another radical left-wing hack. Yes, go ahead. Chevron, Exxon have doubled their profits. Exxon has not doubled its profit, but let's say they have, let's say they've quadrupled, tenfold their profit. What's the answer? Competition, more drilling, more fuel in the market, open the spigots, that would be the answer, right? Despite all the regulations, all the taxes, they can't drill one hole in the ground without permission. They can't refine 
without permission. They can't truck without permission. Despite all that, they're still complaining about it. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, they're the problem. Elizabeth Warren, Robert Reich, and their propagandist, Joy Reid. Want to see more? Sign up for Levin TV.